Hello everyone, my name is Siti Nur Aina Sofia and today my friends and I will be presenting on how sulfuric acid is used in pulp and pepper industry. Assalamualaikum and hi, I'm Ismail Nasla Bitti Jumri. Today my group and I wanna present something fun so I hope you guys can uh, pay your full attention. So let's get it. Hi, my name is Noazra Fasil Binti Mazlan and my motto is you don't have to be great start but you have to start to be great. Hello, my name is Nur Nafisa Binti Ahmad. Let's dive into this topic together. What is pulp and paper industry? The pulp and paper industry is one of the largest industries in the world. It's dominated by North American, Northern European, and East Asian countries. Is it important to sustain pulp and paper industry? Yes, that is because the consumption of paper and paperboard per person varies significantly from country to country. The pulp and paper industry manufactures pulp and paper from wood or recycled fiber. One of the chemicals involved in the process of production is sulfuric acid. Azra, can you tell me what is sulfuric acid? Let's me tell you what sulfuric acid is. Sulfuric acid is a product made from sulfur. Sulfur is recovered and oxidized further to give sulfur dioxide for the production of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is made from 90% of all sulfur. Let's take a look at this video to find out more about the sulfuric acid process. Let's watch this video. Sulfuric acid is a very valuable chemical. It is used in the manufacture of detergents, dyes, fabrics, fertilizers, paints, and plastics, and in many other products. But how is sulfuric acid made? Sulfuric acid is made in a three-stage process called the contact process. In stage one, sulfur is obtained in its elemental form, a solid, it is melted, and is then combusted in oxygen. What do you think is formed at this stage? Could you write a chemical equation for this? Pause, think, and continue when you're ready. The product formed at this stage is sulfur dioxide, and the chemical equation for this is shown. Did you get it right? In stage two, the sulfur dioxide is converted into sulfur trioxide. The reaction is in equilibrium, which means that as the product is formed, the reverse reaction can also occur and it can break down into its reactants. What can be done to this process to speed it up and to force the equilibrium into forming more sulfur trioxide? Pause the video and continue when ready. This reaction can be sped up to form sulfur trioxide by adding a catalyst, vanadium oxide. This is an exothermic reaction, which means it gives out heat. Usually, this means that the formation of sulfur dioxide, the backward reaction, would be favoured at higher temperatures. However, the catalyst needs a temperature over 400 degrees centigrade for it to work, so the idea is a trade-off. The reaction actually takes place at 450 degrees centigrade. You need the gases to reach equilibrium within the very short time that they are in contact with the catalyst in the reactor. So having an increased temperature ensures a high rate of reaction, meaning you establish the forward reaction quickly. Finally, in stage 3, sulfur trioxide is converted into a very concentrated sulfuric acid, and the equation is shown now. This liquid is also known as oleum. It is very viscous and releases acidic fumes. It is very important at this stage to add water carefully, usually as a mist to sulfur trioxide. This is because the reaction is very exothermic, so mixing it with pure water would release a mist of sulfuric acid that would escape into the air. 99.5% pure sulfuric acid is then collected and is shipped off to where it is needed next. There are some acidic waste gases from stage 3, which can escape and cause local acid rain. Here's a challenge for you. What can you fit the chimney with to stop these gases from being released into the atmosphere? The correct answer is that the chimney is usually fitted with acidic scrubbers. These are bases, like sodium carbonate. On contact, they neutralise the fumes, forming salt and water. Other ways to minimise the release of any sulphur oxides is by recycling gases between stages 2 and 3. In summary, the contact process converts sulphur to sulphur dioxide by combusting sulphur in air. The sulfur dioxide produced is heated to 450 degrees centigrade over a vanadium oxide catalyst. This produces sulfur trioxide. The sulfur trioxide is treated with a fine mist of water and 99.5% sulfuric acid is collected. The acidic fumes produced are treated with acidic scrubbers to prevent local acid rain. Isma, can you explain the use of sulfuric acid in agriculture and how this sulfuric acid is important for pulp and paper processing? 
Thank you for the question, Azra. So, let me tell you how acid sulfuric was used in agriculture. The first one, acid sulfuric was used in batteries. Large power batteries work on the basis of chemical reaction between sulfuric acid and lead. When these two materials interact, the sulfur acid serves as electrolytes, and together they generate the required ele electron for a battery to be able to produce voltage. Next, acid sulfur was also used in iron and steel making. Acid sulfur was used in the processing of iron, copper, and steel to clean the metal and prevent oxidation before it is plated with tin or zinc. It is called as pickling. Two examples of using sulfuric acid in this way are to make cans for foods and to supply the correct metal for the sale to the automotive industry. And the last one, acid sulfuric was also used in domestic product. Acid sulfuric was found in domestic product to to due to its corrosive nature being highly corrosive makes sulfuric acid ideal for cleaning surfaces which can get particularly dirty such as toilets acid sulfur also was found in other household products such as laundry detergent salt and dishwasher liquid next to solve your curiosity I'll tell you about the usage of acid sulfur in pulp and paper industry. There are three usage of acid sulfur, sulfur acids in pulp and paper industry, which is pH adjustments, tall oil splitting, and chlorine dioxide generation. Nafisa, can you explain more about the chlorine dioxide generation? Thank you for asking Isma. I will answer this question. So, what is actually chlorine dioxide generation? So, as we know, chlorine dioxide, ClO2, is a powerful oxidizing agent that is used in pulp bleaching. In this reaction, we will use sodium chlorine, sulfuric acid, and methanol. This three reaction will produce chlorine dioxide, sodium bisulfate, formic acid, and the last one will produce water. In addition of that, bleaching pulp is, removes, is removing the lignin that gives higher brightness to the paper than leaving the lignin in the pulp and brightening it by decolonization. Besides that, it leads to a more durable and stable production of paper by bleaching. By the way, I'm curious about tall oil splitting. Can you explain sure, to us, Aina? Tall oil also called liquid rosin or talon, is a viscous yellow-black odorous liquid obtained as a byproduct of the craft process of wood pulp manufacture when pulping mainly coniferous trees. Tall oil is a resin used in a variety of sectors including mining, paper manufacturing, paint production, and synthetic rubber processing. Tall oil extraction is a very cost-effective aspect of pulp and paper mill operations. Tall oil rosin and tall oil fatty acid are made from crude tall oil and a small amount of each are utilized as a foaming agent in oil beneficiation. The paint business use refined crude tall oil to make drying oil, mastic and paints. Skimming and residual sedimentation separate the tall oil from the black liquid. Tall oil is separated into fatty and resin acids by using sulfuric acid. Digesting of pine trees. This slide shows how tall oil is obtained as a byproduct of the pulping process. At the pulp mill, leftover timber and thinned timbers are smashed into pine chips and sent to the digester for the manufacture of pulp.
50% of a pine tree is made up of pulp fibers which are processed into paper material. The remaining 50% is black liquor left over by the alkali digestion process used to obtain pulp fibers. Black liquor contains rosin acid and fatty acids. After separating fuel substances such as lignin, crude tall oil is obtained by acidification of the residual black liquor. Crude tall oil accounts for only a fraction of a pine tree's total volume, and as such we strive to make the best use of this valuable resource. Okay, let me explain to you about pH adjustment. It is important that the pH of, of paper must be 6 or higher. As an example, in the pulp and paper industry, the alkaline, the alkaline digestion process that convert wood into cellulose fibers that can be used to make tissue paper requires the use of high pH setting to eliminate lignin and other color compounds. So, it requires a pH that is stable and nearly neutral. Then, we can use some strong acid like sulfuric acid that are only used to modify the pH. Next, we move to the manufacturing of parchment paper using acid sulfate. What is parchment? Parchment is a writing material made from specially prepared untamed skin of animal, primarily sheep, calvins, calf, and goats. It has been used as a writing medium for over 2 million years. Vegetable paper parchment is made by passing a water leaf made of pulp fibers into sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid hydrolyzes and solubilizes the main natural organic polymer cellulose present in the pulp wood fibers. The paper web is then washed in water which stop the hydrolysis of the cellulose that causes a kind of cellulose coating to form on a water. The final paper is dry. This coating is a natural, non-porous cement that gives the vegetable parchment paper its resistance to this and its semi translucency. So, we proceed with pulp and paper manufacturing process. So I will explain what is meant by this cycle. So to manufacture pulp and paper, we will radiata pine thinnings. Thinning is a term used in agriculture science to mean the removal of some plants or part of plants. The second step is the parking trough. The removal of bark prior to pulping wooden logs or stick for use in paper making. Wood is pulped in order to liberate cellulose fiber from non-fibrous materials. The next one is chipper. Wood chipper is used in paper mill to produce chips from pulp wood so that cooking chemicals penetrate the wood quickly completely and uniformly during manufacturing of chemical block or mechanical block. The next one is thermomechanical refiner. The thermomechanical refiner process use refiners to defibrillate chips that are softened in pre-steaming vessel. And lastly, paper making machine. The paper making machine will be used and the paper is ready to use by consumers. The new spring will be used, will be sent to consumers. After the consumers using the paper, it will be carbicide collection. Carbicide collection is referred as a strategy of local authorities to collect desirable items from the consumers. After collection, they are then measured graded for quality and how it to re recycling paper mill facilities. 
The next one is the inking is the industrial process of removing printing in from paper fibers of recycled paper to make the ink plug. And it will be cleaning and fine screening. And finally, the paper will put in thermomechanical and recycled pulp mix. And lastly, the recycled paper will be sent to paper making machine again and this cycle will be continuously. So, why do we do the pulp and paper manufacturing process? A promising growth used in the pulp and paper industry is to stabilize recycled pulp after bleaching with hydrogen peroxide. In this application, sulfur dioxide acts to maintain the pulp brightness by destroying excess hydrogen peroxide, which can lead to cause brightness reversion. Now, I will tell you about the process of paper making in industry. Step 1. Diluting paper fibers. Diluting the paper fibers this way allows to make thin uniform papers. Step 2. Wire section. At the wet end of the paper machine sits the hard pots, which distribu distributes a uniform track of watery stock. The liquid falls onto the wire or forming fabric. Beneath the wire, foils remove water and improve fiber uniformity, ensuring that the fiber weave together in a tight knee. Step 3. Press section. The wet fiber web passes between large rolls loaded under high pressure to squeeze out as much water as possible. Step 4. Drying section the press sheet paces partly around. In a serpentine manner, a series of steam heat drying cylinders. Drying removes the water content down to a level of about 6%, where it will remain at typical indoor atmospheric conditions. Infrared dryers are also used to supplement cylinder drying where required. Step 5. Cylinder section. The dried paper is molten under high loading and pressure. Only one nib is necessary in order to hold the sheet, which shrinks through the drying section and is held in tension between the press section and the cylinder. Extra nibs give more smoothing but at some expense to paper dry. Step 6. Paper finishing to give the container board a smooth and glossy surface to optimize it for printing. The paper passes through a set of smooth rollers which can be hard or soft that press the paper embossing a smooth face on the paper surface. So, for the last step, paper is poured onto a jumbo reel which can weigh 60 ton and be over 7 meters long. The jumbo reel is lifted by crane to a nearby window where the paper is unwound and cut into smaller roll as ordered by the customer. Then, it's reliable for shipment. Let's go with me to the pop and paper factory to get more detailed information by watching this video. At our biggest mills, we can input up to 3,000 tonnes of cardboard a day to fuel our paper-making processes. In the pulper, the cardboard mixes with hot water so that the paper fibres float in suspension. Any final contaminants, like staples or bits of glass, are pulled out of this mixture. The wet fibres are sprayed onto a forming fabric and pushed through a series of rollers to squeeze out the water. The paper then travels through steam-heated cylinders to dry it out. It is wound onto a huge reel, about 7 metres long and weighing about 60 tonnes. The reels are cut down and shipped to our packaging plants. 